Number one, oxidation states of vanadium and sulfur. First of all, we will make use of the idea that each oxygen will be minus two in the compound. So that will allow us to calculate what vanadium and sulfur is. All right, and then so V will be plus five, plus three here based on the charge. Sulfur will be plus four and plus six. Number two, which species are all the protons, neutrons, and electrons all different? Now, if they are all, the protons and electrons are different, it just means that they must be charged. So that will eliminate C already because C is neutral. And then we can do a quick mental calculation. You can see that neutrons will be 16 here and protons will also be 16 here. So D will be out. And finally, if we do our calculations, we will have protons, neutrons, electrons for fluorine and sodium plus and it is sodium plus that will have all three species being different number. Which element is likely to be in group 4? If it's group 4, that means if we do the ionization energy, there will be a big jump when we go from removing 4 electrons to removing the 5th electron. So we can do a quick calculation and take the differences between each ionization energy. The largest jump we will have will be for option C. There will be around 30,000 difference in the ionization energy. So C will be in group 4. Number 4, Boltzmann distribution. What will happen when we have a higher temperature? Now looking at just this diagram first, if we have a higher temperature, the peak will be lower and will be pushed towards the right side. So we will expect the higher temperature curve to look like this. Activation energy will not change due to the increase in temperature. Right? Unless there's a catalyst involved, then there's a change in activation energy. So the higher temperature, the peak is on the right side and lower and then the activation energy remains unchanged. So option C. Number five, we have a catalyst that is palladium, palladium ions. Which one is not correct about this aqueous catalyst? Changing the concentration, since this is an aqueous catalyst, changing the concentration will have an effect. Unless they're talking about a solid catalyst, then we won't have, right? The catalyst increased the energy. This is not true. The energy will be increased if we increase the temperature. Catalyst does lower the activation energy by providing an alternate pathway for reaction. So C and D are correct. B is not correct. Number six, which one least resembles ideal gas? You have to be clear about the intermolecular attraction. Ammonia will have hydrogen bonding. Okay, because of the hydrogen joined directly to your nitrogen. And then there's a lone pair to complete the hydrogen bonding. The rest of them are instantaneous dipole induced dipole. So will be will have negligible attraction compared to ammonia. So Having a having significant attraction will mean you deviate the most from ideal gas. Number seven, how can we calculate the MR from PV NRT? So we start off with the equation and then from the number of moles, we split it into mass over MR. We bring MR over and the other variables to the, to the left side. So we end up with this equation, mass RT over pressure times volume. And then we make sure our units are consistent. Mass grams, gas constant 8.31. Temperature in kelvins, pressure in pascal. And then volume in meet, cubic meters. Once all these units are okay, 
you can have your MR. In this case, we do not need to calculate thought, right? We just need to arrange them correctly. So answer is D. Which compound is the only guess? Is another way of saying which one compared to the rest have the lowest, weakest intermolecular attraction? For A, B and C, we have hydrogen bonding due to the hydrogen joined to nitrogen or oxygen. For D, we have permanent, permanent dipole, permanent dipole, which will be lower or weaker than hydrogen bonding. So if anything, the fourth one will have the weakest intermolecular attraction. It will be a gas. Which one represents empirical formula? B, C, and D, we can still simplify them to a simpler ratio. So B, C, and D are not empirical formulas yet. Whereas for A, it's already simplified to the, to the simplest ratio. So it could be an empirical formula. Number 10, we have washing powder that contains sodium hydrogen carbonate and the sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid. So we start off with an equation, get sodium sulfate, water, carbon dioxide, and then the information that gets us started will be this is the amount of sulfuric acid used. So concentration multiplied by volume in dm cube we have this number of moles. By ratio, it will be two times the number of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then you multiply by the MR of sodium hydrogen carbonate, we will get 0 0.12 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate for every one gram of washing powder. And then we take the ratio, we multiply by 100%, we will get 12% containing sodium hydrogen carbonate. Eleven. We have the reaction, which is a combustion, and then we have to find out the enthalpy change of combustion, which is the enthalpy change of this reaction. We will use bond energy. So at the start, we have the bonds broken. And we refer to data booklet for each CH bond will be 410. So 410 times 2. And 740 for the CO. And then oxygen broken 496. So this is a total energy broken or required to break the bonds. It's endothermic. Forming the bonds, we refer to the data booklet again. 2 times of CO, 2 times of OH. So this is the energy release exothermic. And then we put them together, plus 2056 minus 2400, we have minus 344. That is the enthalpy change of this reaction, which is also enthalpy change of combustion. Number 12, magnesium nitrate decomposing. So we write out the formula or the equation. We have nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So X will be nitrogen dioxide, Y is oxygen. Based on the ratio of moles, we know that 4 moles will be produced with 1 mole of oxygen. And then we convert to mass because that's what the question wants. So 4 moles multiplied by MR of NO2. 1 mole multiplied by MR of oxygen, we have 184 to 32. And then we simplify, we have divide both by 184. So it's 1 is to 0 0.174. So compare the moles, then change to mass multiplied by their respective MR. Thirteen will be comparing group two. Magnesium versus barium. Magnesium 
removing the fourth electron, you'll be removing from a shell closer to the center compared to barium. So it'll be higher ionization energy. It'll be harder to remove from magnesium. Reaction of the two metals with cold water. Since the valence electrons is further away for barium, it will be more easily lost. So barium is more reactive than magnesium. So it will be B. Fourteen. Two charts. First of all, the chart comparing solubility of the halides in ammonia. AgCl is more soluble than AgBr, which is more soluble than AgI. So the solubility by red should be decreasing. In terms of energy change for the decomposition, you have to remember that it is more easily form H2Cl2 forming HCl is easier to form than HBr so this reaction will be more exothermic and we have less exothermic as we go down the group in other words more exothermic means is more negative it releases more energy so since this is a negative scale most exothermic and as you go down the group, it gets less and less exothermic. So student Q is correct. Heating iodine vapor. When we get iodine heated, it will actually become the gas. The atoms still stick together as I2. And the gas is actually purple in color. 